Hello everyone, Anna from Savvy Cat Realty talking from Porto here today. Um, as you know, today's live theme is I found a house I like, what now? So this is uh, going to be talking about what to do once you find something you like, how the process goes, giving you some tips on what to pay attention to, the kinds of contracts and uh, all the information I can possibly remember to give you. <coughs> Starting on today's topic, uh, I found my ideal property. What now? So the first thing that happens when you find a house that you like is negotiation. So whether it's a private listing or it's an agency listing, you will want to understand more about the pricing and why that pricing was put up. In Portugal, there is a big thing of, I know, I say this in basically all my lives, you know, throwing the clay to the wall. Yeah, that's a Portuguese thing. People try, sometimes they don't get it. Doesn't mean that's always the case. You also find fairly priced property. So don't just assume you can always negotiate. That's not the case. I think you have two kinds of sellers. You have the people that are the wishful thinkers that just list things for a price way up what they are absolutely worth. And in those cases, you can usually have a lot of negotiation margin. And then you have the reasonable people that list for the price they need to sell for, or just a slight margin for negotiation. And when the when it's this uh, type of people, you usually don't have that much of negotiation margin. So you need to, what I do is I ask a few questions to try and understand the reason the property was put up for sale, understand whether or not the, the people selling it are in a hurry. I have access to information that only agents have using a, an MLS-like system that requires you to have a, a, a license here in Portugal. So I'm able to see for how long the property has been on the market. Of course, the longer it has, the more likely it is that it will be uh, willing to negotiate down. And I also try to understand a bit of the personality of the person who's selling, because that will also tell you whether they are someone that will prefer just to live it be, uh, than selling it for a lower price, or they are someone that, you know, just will respond well depending on the negotiation tactics. So the negotiation is definitely a very important thing. And it's something that starts from the moment you do the visitation. The, the, from the questions you ask for the information you get from what you hear the seller and the owner say so that all of that is things that you must pick up on to later use on negotiation so negotiation is the first thing that you do when you find a property you like and based on everything I said so far you make them an offer and they will either agree or refuse and usually when they refuse they make a counter offer so one of the things to be attentive on when you do make an offer and are on the negotiation stage is that here in portugal uh, it's very rare to be exclusivity on the listings and that becomes a problem when you are in negotiation because sometimes you know you get offers from different agencies on the same house and sometimes one doesn't even know about the other and sometimes the, the selling agent you are in contact on doesn't even know that there is a better offer made by someone else represented by a different agent so this can be a big problem here in portugal and i had more than one people of one person complained about you know just being ghosted during negotiations or just getting uh, a reply saying, oh, I've got, I've got a better off to offer. It's much more common on rentals. You actually don't get much of a negotiation margin in rentals at all because there is so much more uh, demand and offer. So um, that's, uh, uh, that's a problem and it's very hard to get rentals because of this. Um, but if you are buying it can also happen and the best way 
to counter this is to make a um, reservation contract. And there's a big difference between a reservation contract and a promise contract. So here in Portugal, we call the final contract for a house purchase the CCPV. So that's CCPV because it stands for Contrato de Promessa de Compra e Venda. So the um, CPCV, yeah, I told, I told you twice, but CPCV, it's the final binding contract that you make in order to purchase a house. And it usually defines a down payment that is usually between 10 and 15% that you pay at the moment of signing and sets a timeline for the purchase of the house. So that is um, a binding contract. And if either of the parties backs down, they will have to pay double the deposit made to the other party. So be very careful when doing uh, CCPV. It's by, we call it the promise contract. So it can be very misleading for foreigners. So when someone tells you, let's make a promise contract, that's the final binding co contract. So don't make that unless you are really, really sure about, about buying that house. If you are not 100% sure and still want to do some verification and negotiation, the best thing you can do is to do a reserve contract. And the reserve contract allows you to take the house off the market for an agreed period of time in exchange for a fee. That fee is usually between 1 and 5k and usually the sellers don't agree to uh, a reserve for longer than one month. So it's very rare that happens. So keep that in mind that likely you will only be able to reserve for one month. And during that period, the property gets taken off the market and you can do all kinds of verifications that you want to do. So you can get the, the structure verification. We always do that with our clients. That's always included in our service. But you can do uh, everything you want to check do during that time. That's the time to check it and do final negotiations. And it's also the uh, it's always done when people need a loan because of the way that the banks work here in Portugal. So here in Portugal, you always need to have the property before you get the loan approved. That's something a lot of my uh, foreign uh, abroad, especially overseas clients struggle with, because in a lot of places like the US, you get a pre-approval for credit. That's not a thing here. Banks don't do that. And even though the pre-approval can make a lot more sense in a lot of ways, it's not done. And even if you get uh, to make a pre-approval, it will still not be a final binding uh, contract with the bank. And when you get uh, uh, the site on the house, you will still need to resubmit everything to get everything approved again. So uh, the pre-approval, if you manage to get one, it's purely the minimum possible amount that you can get because here the banks always uh, always give you the loan based on the specific property. So they will need to do um, an evaluation of the house with their specific uh, evaluation agents and they will then um, give you, tell you whether or not they give you the loan based on that. I do have a full video on loan so you want more details on that go check that on my video tab here on facebook um but overall the whole loan process can take up to a month and that's usually the the main reason for people to do reserves so you need to submit all the documentation to the bank and wait for the bank approval and then wait for uh, everything to get to the deed uh, and the bank needs to be present in the deed that's another thing to be aware of is that when you are asking for a loan, you pay higher EMT taxes because there is three parties involved and you pay basically pay taxes on the mortgage. Um, regarding the reserve, that's basically what it is for. So I always advise, it to, advise you to do it if you are sure you want to buy the house. If you are already 100% sure you want to go forward with it, you can just go to the system the CPCV, so the promise contract, 
and then to the teams. Sometimes people can go directly to the teams, but you really have to trust the seller to do that. Because if you do, they, you know, they can just sell it to someone else in the meantime. Uh, if you don't have any documentation, just making the, the reserve and the guarantee. So, um, regarding the documentation that you need to buy a house, there is five main uh, things that are needed. It's the Certival Permanent, that's basically the official governmental document for the property that registers the owners and uh, the transactions that happened up to that point. That's the, you need the Matriz. The Matriz is the uh, financer's document from the property that basically lists the different units. For example, you can have, if you're buying a, a land, you can have multiple matrices in the same land because they used to be different units. The same thing for a building and so on. Then you need the license, uh, the habitation license. If the building is over, uh, it's it was constructed before 1951, then you have exemption of this license, but otherwise it is required. And you need the certificate in general. That's the energy certificate. This is mandatory for any listing. However, if it's a ruin or a, over a certain age, you can be exempt because it will likely be a terrible one. So when they are exempt, assume it's a terrible one. <laughs> and that's the main documents that you need to verify for the house sale. If you do not, if you want to do all of this without involving an agency, make sure you have a lawyer verifying all of this for you. There are a few exemptions for these documents, like I said, uh, but it's mainly for old property. For newer property, then you need to have all of this. Uh, I do always advise to not buy property sites on the scene. I, uh, I do. I only do that for investor clients, and when I do it, I always recommend them to have a lawyer uh, signing for them, so there is always a third party uh, involved in the process. But overall, I wouldn't recommend to buy property side of the scene. If, like, uh, like I said before, if you are doing the purchase full cash, you will have a lot of more negotiation margin. Why? Because it makes the whole process a lot faster. So basically, if you buy cash, you don't have to go through the loan process. You have you pay lower tax, and literally you can just sign the deed the day after if everyone is available and all the documentation is in order. So buying cash is usually gives you a better negotiation margin for these reasons and uh, cash buyers have a much lower probability of falling through so if you are a cash buyer do keep that in mind it can always be used as a negotiation tactic so what now you have all of these ready and you just want to go to the, to the date how long until the date well, this can vary a lot. If everything is ready and no one is living in the house, then you can just sign the deed the day after and have the key in hand. But that is just if everything is ready, all the documentation is in order, no one is living there, then that happens. And that's usually the exception, not the rule. So, for example, if the owners are still living there, you usually include in the contract for buying a timeline for them to leave. Same thing happens with tenants, unless you are buying with tenants. And if you are buying with tenants, be very careful, because it's usually not that easy to get them out. I do that sometimes with my clients, but when I do that, I always make sure to understand who the tenant is, if it's someone that will be easy to negotiate it and will be reasonable or if it's someone that will give you a major headache and involve a court law to get out. When that happens, things are very, 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 very slow. So um, be very, very powerful about buying things with tenants. Uh, another thing you should be aware of is if the um, uh, property belongs to heirs. So 
when there's a number of people that are heirs, there's a number of problems that can arise. The most common one is someone in the heirs not agreeing to the sale and it just takes one. Even if there's 10 heirs, if one of them doesn't agree, then none of them can sell. So this can be a huge problem. So if you are buying something that is an inheritance, don't do any contracts until you are sure all the heirs are in the same page and all the documentation is in order, because if it isn't, you can have to wait a very long time. I know of a case where uh, they had to wait three months, three or four months until they had to, they were able to sign the deed for the house because of the hair situations. So that's another problem that can arise. As you know, public services in Portugal tend to be very slow. Depending on the season, it may not be that easy to get the schedule uh, in the notary. Notary is a private, but there is also a public uh, service called Casa Noada that you can use to sign the deed. The way the deed goes is that both parties are present. If there's a loan involved, then the, a representative from the bank must also be present. And um, the, a lawyer reads through the contract and uh, both parties confirm that all is in order and sign the contract and make the final payments, either by bank transfer or by check. Uh, there is notary fees that are paid, it's usually paid by the buyer. The standard practice is the buyer pays all the fees. Uh, sometimes you can negotiate for the seller to pay part of the fees. Another thing that can be a problem is, I, I, I have had that re happen recently, if the property belongs to an overseas uh, company uh, that is in a tax haven, this can be a problem, and I definitely recommend you not to buy the company that, that, that was suggested in this case. I highly recommend against it. Do not buy a company to buy a house. Uh, however, if you really want the house, the, 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 when the owner, either the owner or the buyer, have uh, an account in a tax haven, they are punished by the Portuguese state by having the higher taxes possible. So in case of transaction tax, it comes up to 10% of the transaction value. So it can be a very high tax. So in the, the this case, for example, it was the seller that had the, purchased the house through a company in a tax haven, and the buyer would be the one uh, being losing on it so to say because the buyer is usually the one who pays the fees so in this case um we were we are trying to negotiate to see if we can divide the tiktox or discount the house in order to reflect that because the buyer has no fault at all because, uh, with the tax haven it's not the buyer who is in the tax haven it's the seller but yeah, there is a number of things that you need to be very careful when you're buying property. If you get this wrong, you can be end up paying a lot more than you would be paying to an agent or a, a lawyer. So that if you are foreign, I definitely do not advise you to do this on a loan. If you don't want to buy to get a buyer agent or even a normal agent, at least get a lawyer. Never do the deed alone, well, because there's a number of things that may be a problem. If the the, the areas in the contract in the in the documentation aren't right, if the anything on the built area is not licensed, you can get fined. If there is any illegal things going on, if the the, the registry doesn't match the property, there is a lot of things that can be a problem when you are buying that can go wrong and it's definitely worth it to pay a lawyer or a buyer agent to make sure everything is fine another common problem is that the construction does not match what is uh, advertised so definitely do a verification with an engineer or a, 
architect to make sure everything is fine. So assuming all of this is okay and you proceed with the deed, you just uh, book the date, you make sure both parties are available and uh, it's a fairly fast process, it usually takes about between half an hour to an hour and then you just leave key in hand and you can just enter your new house. It's a fairly simple process, it's there's just a lot of things you need to be careful about. So, I think this more or less covers the whole process of buying. I'm going to check here on my cheat list if there's anything I forgot, but I don't think so. I would love to hear some questions for you, but honestly, I think no one is seeing this today. <laughs> so, we'll see about that. The, the Facebook live thing, sometimes it's really weird. I never know if I have people watching me or not. It's really nice. So yeah, today, as I was saying, I'm staying on my childhood home in my mother's house. This used to be my home when I lived here in Portugal. And I've been camping here ever since I got a car accident. That's another thing. Insurances. Oh, that's got good, I remember that insurances in houses are actually not mandatory unless you are getting a loan if you are getting a loan they are usually they are mandatory and usually included in the, in the bank you can uh, you are free to get them outside the bank you are not mandated to get to go with the one the bank offers however they usually uh, incentivize you with significant cuts on the rates the loan rates so if you just have to make the calculation to see if it's worth it. Um, but it's not mandatory to have an insurance if you are buying it uh, cash without having a third party involved. However, it is advisable to get uh, an insurance if you know anything happens like a flood, an open faucet, something that could damage your home. So it's better to have one. Uh, with, the, with the loans, it's also mandatory to have uh, insur life insurance that is not mandatory if you buy cash. That is something completely optional. I don't think most people in Portugal have life insurance. Um, health insurance is much more common than life insurance. So, yeah, I think this more or less covers everything you need to know about uh, buying property and the process after you find what you like. Uh, you are always free to review my videos on my video tab on Facebook. If you are watching this live, please let me know by leaving questions that I will answer immediately. Or uh, if you are watching this on replay, you can always leave a comment anyway and we will come back to you as soon as possible. Um, so, I don't think I have got a lot of viewers today, I may just uh, turn this on relatively early. And I will be looking forward for the comments when the things go live. As I said, we will also be making a YouTube, so these videos will now be available on YouTube probably next week. And you will be able to check everything there, we will be always paying attention to see what new comments pop up and we love to hear back from you and hear your feedback if you already purchased a house how was the process did everything go right if everything anything go wrong do tell us in the comments so other people don't fall into the same mistake and uh, i hope you all of you have an, a great weekend i will be spending it here in portugal in porto and I see you all next week. Bye now.